presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Eddie in Boca Raton. Hey, Eddie, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. It is a treasure to have TFNN every hour during the trading day to be there to help you, to guide you, and even to give you some peace of mind or like that, that somebody else is there with you while you're, while you're trading this crazy market, either well, up or down. Well, listen, we appreciate you growling prowling with us out here because we wouldn't be out here, folks, if we didn't have all you guys, gals, tigers and tigresses as clients. And, you know, the market teaches you every single day, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFMM. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's a TGIF, folks. Shot week this week. You're going to love a four-day weeks, man. I'm digging those, man. Be impeccable with your word. Replace fear with love. This is a great card, man. The human mind is like a fertile ground where seeds are continually being planted. When you're impeccable with your word, your mind is no longer fertile ground for the words that come from fear. Your mind is only fertile for the words that come from love. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrial trading up 80, NASDAQ up 26, S&P's up 10, gold contract up a buck, 17.40 an ounce. You got silver up four cents, $19.23 an ounce platinum, up 19 bucks, trading at a price point of 8.84. You got oil up two bucks at 104.90. Notes and bonds, the 10 year note, down 19 ticks, trading 117.21. The 30 year off of point and a half at 136.29 and King Dollar. King Dollar down 134 ticks, trading at 106.995. Euros 101. Yen is at 136, and the British pound is at 120 to 1 U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well, the way this is looking, folks, you're going to get a, a bounce up. It looks to me like we're going to get a bounce up to the higher swing point. So we're going after the swing point that was established out here on the 28th. And... That's the 28th of June. That swing on the S&P is 393.16. Now, we haven't hit it, and that's, that's a good thing if you're bullish in the market, folks, because you're not going to have enough juice this week. But the way this is trading right now, particularly at the NDX, I'll get into this in a second. And make a long story short, bottom line, I expect you're going to go after that. I expect number one, let me just look at these futures for a second. So we take a look at the futures, the S&P futures. And I'm just looking at these because I want to just get an idea of if this thing's going to stick coming into the close. So we take a look at this. It got us. Yeah, we, yeah, this is good. This is good. So we take a look at these S&Ps. This is what you have. Now, watch this. This is pretty cool, actually. Yeah, this is good. This is, gonna, this is actually going to. What you don't want it to do is test the swing today. That's the bottom line. If you're a bull, you do not want to test that swing today. Uh, the way it's looking to me, it's the futures are, all, you know, they're only up five and a half right now. But if they stay up five and a half, uh, even to ten, ten and a half, that's going to be fine. You don't, you don't want it to take these highs out. That's the real bottom line. We go into the uh, three Qs. What do you have with the three Qs? Same type of setup. The Qs are stronger. The bottom line, they're, they're weaker in the way down, they're stronger in the way up again. What do you have with the Qs? You know, the swing point on the Qs. Um, 296, 5.7, 297, $2, $2, $2.96.57. You need 54 million shares. Now you can see what's happening here. We're going to get, now this is, this would be the ultimate setup, folks. You don't want it to get to the 296. Oh, it already did. Okay, that's all right. And so the reason it's all right is that we're going into 54 million. We're going to do more than 54 million. We're going to do like 68, 70 million. Um, and if it lays just right there, that's, that's good. That's saying that the Qs will actually get up to this next swing, 
which is up there at the 303. And right now you're at 295. We go into the gold contract. We take a look at gold. Gold, bottom line, you know, still see, needs some action, okay? Um, right now, gold is trading up a buck ten. No big deal. What we did do is we rejected 1726 this morning. And right now you're at 1740. And what this is all about, this is how this shakes out, man. This is all about the dollar. You, you can really start trading off the dollar, folks. That's the real bottom line. Because what is, what's happened is that the, the market cannot stand a strong dollar. That's the bottom line. You can see what happened this morning. The futures were down. You can almost smell it out because it was just kind of like, okay, man. You know, this dollar got to 107, 786. As soon as that starts backing up, the bottom line, that S&P rejected lower price and starts going higher. And we just might have, um, you know, the dollar taking a break for a bit. And if the dollar takes a break and does like, you know, move lower, the bottom line is that you will see um, the market move higher. And, you know, it doesn't negate the ABC structure down. What it does do uh, is give just enough uh, juice uh, to get everyone going. That, that's, that's my take on this deal. We take a look at the bond market. The bond market just continues to want lower price, higher yield. You know, we had the jobs number come out this morning with the strong, strong jobs number. That's going to basically, you know, give Powell running room to basically keep banging this uh, interest rate structure out fast and furious. Your next Fed meeting is on the 27th of July. It's a two-day meeting. 27th, they'll come out with the, uh, you know, the meet. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, it's the 27th, they come out with the uh, statement to 2 o'clock. Uh, bottom line, I expect what you're going to see here is that you could, you know, do another 0.75 up. And what we do have next Thursday, I believe, is going to be the CPI. The CPI is going to be the number. So on the jobs number this morning, what you had, you had the participation rate go down, <coughs> which in, in fact brings the jobs number higher at simultaneously. So the participation rate, of course, is that what that is, is that that's the aspect of how many people actually want a job. Once you're out of the workforce for a certain amount of time, uh, you are, you're dropped off, and that's how the particip participation rate actually goes down. And, uh, you know, we'll see where that shakes out. But uh, percentage-wise, we're not even close to where we're going to be in the long term. Let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here today and see what's moving this market around. You had Advanced Micro, that's up... 21 cents. Um, Ford's up 3 cents. No big deal. Amazon's down 53. Tesla's up 21 bucks. That's the big mover out there. Uh, Coinbase is up $3. Who knows why that is up $3. That's like uh, insane. But the bottom line is it's up 3 bucks. We go take a look at uh, inside the Dow Industrials, the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow Industrials. And point wise, what you have out here. Uh, we have United Health. I get, think is going to be the big one. Yeah, United Health is putting 50 positive points. Amgen 13, American Express 12. Taken away from it, Goldman minus nine, Salesforce minus eight, uh, Microsoft minus seven. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Come right back, folks. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, best of Behuli, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 58. Nasdaq's up 21. S&Ps are up 7. And best of we're going to go to our man Frank from Gloucester. And you haven't seen Gloucester yet, but Gloucester is one of the most favorite places in the world, not just in the United States. Where is, is this in Massachusetts? It's in Massachusetts. And I used to sail by it when we used to go from South Boston up to Marblehead. And I always wanted to know what those cliffs were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, what's going on? Hey, how are you, Tommy? This geologist can tell you all about those cliffs. I, you know, you know, it's so cool, man. Like just what I said, the best fit. I remember that. So folks, the first time that I sailed up there, I was probably, you know, you, you know, I wasn't sailing myself. I was sailing someone. I was a crew for someone. But I remember looking over, and it's just a beautiful picture, man. And, you know, it, what happens is you're sailing that coast, folks. You know, the coast of Massachusetts is pretty flat, really. Do you know what I mean? Then all of a sudden it goes, yeah, coming all the way up. Yeah. Just like you're a scholar. Man. Oh, it's beautiful. Gl Gloucester, Gloucester Harbor is a fjord. Is it? Yeah, it's a fjord. It's a glacially cut valley out into the ocean. It's kind of cool. That would make sense. Now I see, I see it because see, when it, what happens, you kind of get too you kind of get actually so, so close to it because there's bull, big boulders out oh, out okay. there too, which is pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'll that'll okay, love it. But but that said, I can't find anything to invest in. I'm, I'm ready to buy potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you can't go wrong with potatoes, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Potatoes. And he—he's he, not even Irish. No, no. He's—he's oh, okay. he's my, he's oh, my—he's my favorite right. Italian. That's the way oh. we said it, my Italian family too. So, you know, that was just the Boston thing. Yeah. No, I know. I know. So, the GDX, right? Hey, can you give me a Fibonacci lesson on this? Because, uh, you know, it looks like it started out with a swing high in mid-April at about 41, yep. and it came pretty much straight down, although it did a little ABC there to 29 and change right. in mid-May. Then it popped up uh, at the beginning of June to about 33, yep. and it started to come down. It did not break the B point, the, the May mid-May swing low with volume. Right. But, uh, but it went back up above it and then kept coming down. So that 
that kind of creates a complex ABC. Is that right? Should the should the D project the original D yeah, let, projection let me, still mm, hold? No, I'm with you. Let me see. So thirty thirty six. No, it never broke it. All right, I got it. But here, let's do this because Frank, I think you're. I know you're onto something. So pitch it, folks. Okay, in the gold report right now, I don't own one gold stock. Okay, which is very unusual. But I can yeah, tell you, when I saw the GDX coming up, I'm buying tomorrow. Yeah. I've already. I actually bought today. Um, really? Yeah, I think this thing's ready, man. Because um, you look on a weekly chart, and you're in no man's land there. Well, where you're at, this is where you're at. You're the the. You're at the high here. Let me put, you got to put the actual contract up. So if I put the generic contract up, what you're going to see, I'm, I'm putting the generic gold contract up because the GDX, that's what it's based on, right? And yeah. we'll put this back. And there's no doubt that it's scary because, you know, the bottom line is that you can see what has happened here. We, we got down, you know, two on the generic to 1741. But watch this. The last low was, oh, that one there is 17.21. The low before that is 16.92. The low, but you see, you see what I'm doing, Frank? So it's yeah, like, yeah. that's telling me that, you know what, man? This is still going to be a higher low. And it's been brutal. There's no doubt about that. And I think it's based on the aspect of this dollar. I think this dollar is going to pull back, man. So, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm going to give it a go. Um, and we'll see where it shakes out, man. But, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a pretty good okay. setup. It, 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 it's what you said, though. I mean, the, what happens here, folks, is this. Like, if you just look at the GDX, we pull this back, and let's put that on the same three-year weekly. This is where this is dangerous, but you can also see... See how that we didn't hit the highs of the low yet? That'd be 2550. Yes. But then if I put this, watch if you know the you're in this area and, and see how there's like no sellers, man. So Yeah, and there's a pretty pretty big uh consolidation pre COVID low. There is. Uh, no, there is many months. There is, man. Back into twenty back into twenty nineteen. You're right. You're right. I mean it would it would have been really sweet if it got down to this you know, the, the 25 area, okay? You know, because that would be yeah. the high. 25.50 would have been the high of the actual low on a weekly. On a monthly, we're dealing with a different number. It actually dug into that bar. Because the top of that bar was 29.96. But guess what? No. If you reject oh, that yeah. bar, that's, that's saying that, you know, you're wide open to go right back topside. And what we do have in the gold market, folks, is this. Top side, what we have is that we have volume at that last swing point. I gave it up, but you know, the, the equity-wise, there's some good volume there. Do you know what I'm saying? At, at that, at those, at those highs. In uh, well, yeah, I'll show April. you. If you look at Anglo Ashanti, right? AU. Yeah. This is yeah. you know bottom line. As you can see, the the high that was generated out here, you know, at the um, end of April, March, twenty six ninety six. You got some good volume. Got smoked all the way down to the price point of 14. You're at 14.96. Yeah, yeah. We put this on a weekly, and you can see that, okay, this is, you know, it, it basically got under the last swing with light volume. That last swing was 14.57. Now we're going to reject it this week because we're going to close over 14.57. So that'll be a good start. Um, you know, so, and you can see this on a weekly. Oh, yeah. On the weekly, this took out the other swing point. A lot of these did, you know. This swing here had uh, 28 million. That swing had 22. So that's telling me that you know this might be over. Meaning, you know, you might get yeah. something going here. And it, listen, we know it's going to be about the dollar. You know, if the dollar you yeah. know backs down a little, um, and when I'm looking, you heard me at the beginning, Frank. When I'm looking at the market, it says, you know what, man, this looks to me like it wants to go a little bit higher. So that combination is saying to me that that's where I think it's going to go. So. Okay. Cooking, well, brother. Cool. Thanks. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Yeah. All right. So you think the dollar is going to go lower? A little. Yeah. Why is that? You. It's just. It's been here. Yeah, so if we put it up, it's it's been on a run that's spectacular. The, the 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 problem that I would have, okay, on the bear side, meaning on the bad side, is that the only swing left is one twenty one. 
That being said, though, you know, yesterday it's start, it's starting to stall. So, you know, it could basically pull back to a swing of 105 and still not be done going up. Normally, doll currencies trend, and this is really trended, and it might be just taking a break. I mean, because if we go back to January, the dollar was only at 95. So you might have to. So I gotta go buy some. You might right have now, to get huh? some euros. Well, we'll, we'll see. But I mean, but you might. You, you really, I really might. And one of the tigers was saying, "There's no doubt." You know, what would change the dynamic is that you know the market would think that the Europeans are going to go up on their rates. You can see the, the the euro. You know, rejected that 101 today. I no, it, it rejected par 100. Rejected par today. So it's a good time for a bounce. Stay right there, folks. Best and I come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 42. The Nasdaq's up 13. S&Ps are up 6. So... Tell me what's happening in the real estate market this week. Uh, this week, uh, well, you, you remember the text I sent you with a uh, highly motivated seller? Yes. Make an offer. Right. Any offer. I know. know. So yeah. That, that's just like we, we haven't seen that in at least two, three years, right? Right. Even two, even right. two and a half years ago. Right, uh, right. This was like back in the day. Yes, when exactly. you couldn't sell anything. Exactly. So I think that's where we are now. Right. Where people are like desperate. Right. Just so so picture this this morning, folks. Best that I talk almost every morning when I'm driving in, okay? So I call them this morning and... Um, because we've we've done the whole cycle now, do you yeah. know what I mean? And what I mean by the whole cycle is at the beginning, we're trying to move product, and it's so hard to move product, and we'd be putting mailers out and open houses and postcards. and I mean, we know this city upside down, literally every doorknob. <laughs> and that's after you sent me that, I says, okay, so the, the cycle's starting again. So what happens, folks, is that when, it doesn't mean you can't move product. It just means that you have to really understand 
the product, number one, and how you may be able to get someone's attention. And, you know, bottom line, you know, they can decide what price they want to come in at, but that's what you have to do. So we haven't had that in such a long time. Um, it's pretty wild, man. And, yeah. and it actually is not that long. Yeah. Because yeah. when, when it accelerated, remember, it only accelerated like the last year, year and a half. Yeah, year you and know? a half. Yeah. yeah. And, so you know, it so. Just, just really took off. And then, but it, it's funny to start seeing that now, just make an offer. You know? No, no, it All is. All offers welcome, you know. It we is. We see that all the time. So, uh, and I think right now what's happening too is, uh, a lot of buyers and realtors are scared to go below asking price. Right. Because they're just being used to for the past two years basically going over ask. Exactly. So going under ask was like not even a question. Right. Like you, can't, you can't even right. think about it. So right now they're just scared. Right. And it's like, you know, it's, it's been on the market three, three, four weeks, just, just make an offer. You know, whatever you think it's worth. Exactly. Because when you do the stats, folks, okay, and this is... Well, this is the stats in Pinellas County. I don't know what the stats are. Cause, so in Pinellas County, what's still happening is this. If you're in Pinellas County, and just like Bestford said, if a house is on the market more than three weeks, it's stale. Yeah. Because the, the, the take is, the, I, I saw the, uh, the June numbers, the, all the numbers, the take was still 11 days. Yeah. Which is pretty wild, okay? Yeah. Um, but what has happened was, I think it was yesterday, the day before, that was the first time that I saw that the price decreases. So every day what happens, folks, is this, on the MLS, what you get, you get the amount of new houses out, well, we look at it, the amount of new houses, the price decreases, and pendings, right? This is the first week that I saw that the price decreases was double the amount of new listings. Yeah. I think it was on Wednesday. Yeah, you know? probably, yeah, one yeah. of those days. And yeah. that was pretty intense, you know, so... And, you know, what we had, you know what's going to be interesting here, folks, is this. The, the real estate market at the beginning of this is almost just like the stock market. When it goes down, it takes a bounce. Yeah. Because I remember at the, um, at the Gulf War, I was moving a house out, and I was so lucky because what had happened, the housing had started going down. But when the Gulf War came in, all of a sudden for three months, housing went up. And it went up a lot. Wow. And then dropped, and then the dropped out period. And well, you know, this is what's kind of happening right now because uh, two, before two weeks ago, so, you know, late May, early June, right. there was no action. Right. Now we're starting to see a little bit of pickup on, on that, but uh, it's still not as much action. No, no, it's be. not. But, but, and what that is, folks, is that the, you know, I was talking about a little about this yesterday, and... What has happened is that the mortgage rates did pull back to average about 5.25 yesterday. Yeah. Um, so that sounds pretty good now, <laughs> which is not, okay? Yeah. But the bottom line, it sounds good. Compared to, yeah, 6.5. And then, you know, we're, we're moving some product out for another builder. And what's intriguing is that you'll start seeing this too. You'll start seeing builders uh, paying down mortgages. Yeah. And well, paying down to get a mortgage. Yeah. Now, this particular bill, was, he's willing to pay 20 grand per 600. Yeah. You know, which is really a smart way of doing it. And it's great for the, for the client, too. There's no doubt. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Monthly payment goes. Right. It goes pretty, down dramatically. Pretty good. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So because it's not bad at 4%, you know, interest rates. You know? No, it's not. Yeah. It's not. And so, yeah, we'll see. We'll and see with that happens. one, the one we're bringing up here, so that, that, the one we're just bringing up, it wasn't on a 30 year, it was on a 20 year. What you're going to see, this is what you're also going to see as they're gonna see the different variables inside, you know, a 15, 20, or 30. Yeah. So the dramatic part will be that if it's a 15 to 20, you'd be surprised how much the interest rate can, structure can actually go down too. Yeah. You know what I mean, so. Yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty crazy to see the, the difference between 15 and 30 year. Isn't it? No, uh, there, there's, no there's no doubt about that. Um, and so what, what also happens and this is what's really cool. If we take a rocket mortgage, right? Yeah. So what happens, folks, here, watch this. The, I want to just show you something here. Tommy was bringing this up on a show. This is, this is about as good as it gets. That, this, is why, this is why that... Uh, the, wow. Okay, so... Rocket mortgage, right? Dan, this is why this guy is one of the richest guys in the world. Here, let me see this. Management, where is he? Where's Dan? I thought, hold on. 
I think you hit the wrong rocket. Oh, did I? Okay, yeah. okay, one second. Hold on. There we go. Rocket mortgage. Okay, but well, where is the... So which one would that be? I got to pull the, up... The corporation, maybe? The first one? No, I got to... Oh. Rocket companies. So weird. Thank you, Duffy. RKT. Wait, one second. There we go. RKT. RKT. When you see this, folks, okay, you're going to crack up. So, okay, here we go. So you got Rocket Mortgage right now. It's traded at $8.63. And Okay, so that guy even, I don't know, he, he's, he's on this. So the guy that started is in there. Oh, okay. But I want to show you something here. Watch this. This is a, you know, and this is what Tommy was talking about. He, what he was talking about was the aspect of Rocket Mortgage was, was a private company, okay? Now, you can see, and <laughs> look at this. This is crazy. In 2020, it did $15.7 billion in business, okay? 2021, $12 billion. This year they plan on doing seven billion. Wow! Now watch this. Watch this, though. This gets better. So I go back here for a second, and I'm going to show you how we issue info. Here it is, right here. So you can see that he went public August fifth of 2020 at eighteen dollars. So what that means is that the, the, at the peak of the market, what uh, Dan Gilbert, thanks man, thanks Tommy, is that the peak of the market, right? He decides to let the public in. Well, whenever they let the public in, it's over. Yeah. Okay, because he didn't need the money. So he sold his shares at 18 and it's trading eight now. Wow. I know, isn't that wild? These guys made a killing out that, there. And that's, that's the essence, okay? of basically how markets move, you know, um, pretty wild. You know what's interesting, folks, is that there's, a, there's an article yesterday about um, there's a private equity firm, Atlanta something, and I'm familiar, I got to know the last name, but they're thinking, this is one of the biggest private equity firms in the world, and they're thinking of going IPO. And as soon as I saw that, I said, you know what, these deals are going to dry up for a long period of time now. That's, that's the bottom line. Yeah. You know, because as soon as they want to go IPO, you know, your private company, oh, let it, let, let's take everyone else's money. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. Best way I come right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 940. You get the NASDAQ up 9. S&Ps are up 2. So let's go take a look at a couple builders because, you know, we were looking. If we take a look at Lenar, folks, okay, this is going to get interesting, best because what happened in, in 2000. And five, six, seven, right? Yeah. Was it the builders were falling apart, folks, right? Then the Fed balked. And what ends up happening is they balked, meaning went down in rates again, the acceleration went higher. So I've been watching these builders, man, and, and when you look at Lenar here, so watch. You can see Lenar made a, a low there at 62, right? That low was established out here on June 17th. And you can see, you know, this is, to me, it's a small ABC up, okay? You know, so we just went from that uh, 62 to 78. And the real question is, is it going to bounce more? Now, let me show you, because what's so, always so cool, folks, is that, you know, physically being in the business and, you know, digitally being in the business, meaning trading, is pretty cool. So you can see what we did here. We, we got down to that, you know, you came straight down from... 112, no, oh, 117, f straight down to 62. So, I mean, it was quite a hit. Wow. You know, you're talking about 50%, right? It's 50% retracement. Now, you can see the volume down there, 20 million, and you're going into 29 million because what you're doing, you're going into the downdraft. So now the question that we have, uh, watch this. Now, I'm going to bring you back, and I'm going to bring this back all the way back, folks, for the last, you know, because we've been going up. In the markets and in real everything. We've been going up in everything since 2008. So, here it is right here, I believe. So, they topped out in 2005. Yeah, here it is right here. So, 2005, you're at a price point of 66. We go down to 38 in 2006. Now, watch this. You go from 38 and you do that one more pop to 56. <laughs> 20 more bucks. Wow. And then it's over. So I'm watching this for the same type of deal, man. Yeah, it looks it, the same. It, it, isn't that crazy? No, I'm telling you, man. It's, it's, and what that is, you know, the bottom line is that if you remember the last hurrah, and the last hurrah was pretty intense in 2007 and eight, and the unfortunate part about it, folks, was all about fraud then. Yeah. It was all about every person in the world you know, owning 10 houses was like... <laughs> yeah, it was, it was you crazy. Know. You know, I was just looking at some numbers in uh, in the Tampa Bay, and Lenar sold a billion dollars. Just in Tampa Bay? Just in Tampa Bay. Right, no, I know. They're, they're, they're huge in Florida. There's that's, no doubt. That's crazy. There's yeah. not, I bought a house off Lenar a long time ago. Was nice house, too. Yeah. How long have they been in business? Uh, forever. Yeah, let me see. I'll tell you how long they've been in issue information. They went public in 1993. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what Toll Brothers, I believe, because I was bringing these back. What's Toll Brothers info? Because I was actually looking. To, yeah, so, so Toll Brothers, watch this one, folks, because what I was doing also is this. This is 1986. What I, was, what I had done 
and I have done bisected and dissected. I was bisected and dissecting the, the pullback in 89, because that's where I think we're going to be in the real estate market. So what happened, folks, in 89, because i got to bring it back further, is that the stock market crashed in, yes, it was 89. 89, oh my God, it won't even, <laughs> 89 is a lot further than I think. <laughs> when were you born? 88. What? You were born in 88? Yeah. I love it. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, you can't see it as much. That's 91. Yeah, you can't. Uh, yeah, okay, so here it is. See, this is this is my point. So 87, what happened is that yeah, the stock market crashed in 87, folks, right? Now, the stock market came right back, and it didn't hit the real estate market for about nine months later because people had lost so much money because they got out, whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you can see Toll Brothers went from $4.12, and then it laid out at 71 cents and oh. down to 56 cents. Then it started coming back in 1991. It was $1.81, but that was, that was a severe downdraft. That, you know, I mean, there's, there's plenty of people that weren't around, but there's plenty of people that were around also at that point. And that's kind of, you know, we'll find out. That's where I think we're at. That's where I think... Uh, yeah, we'll find out if they keep building or not. Well, well the, the, what we do have this time, and this is what's pretty cool, folks, not only just for the real estate market, but for the stock market, is this. Demographically, you have, I'm a baby boomer. The baby boomers started about uh, six years ahead of me, and they're about 10 years down. Tommy would be the next large chunk. He's, he's actually one year above it. But he's the, and so that chunk there, from folks that are from 40 to your age, actually the, in a couple years younger, yeah. are actually bigger than the baby boomers. Wow. So what happens is this, and this is where supply and demand is really cool, is that you're at the beginning of prime making money. Yeah. So isn't Tommy. That's how it works, okay? It also works that you're going to buy a house. You're going to start a family. You're going to... So that is, and of course, because, with, because of technology folks and, you know, medical technology, people are living longer. Yeah. So that... You know, more people mean more demand. Yeah. You know, so that's the one, not the one deal, but that's a deal that can keep things, you know, not as disastrous. Let's put it that way. Yeah, so demand is going to be high for a while, huh? Demand is going to be high for a while because on the other side of it, um, you've had less places built, too. Yeah. We know that. The amount of places that are built have gone down dramatically. Um, you know, and they're not going to pop up in a second because what does happen is that, like, let's say, like in this town right here, right? What we have in this town, folks, is this. So picture, you have monster builders, right, that can build, you know, the high rises, right? Yeah. You have people that can build the singles. You don't have that middle ground. Like, there's probably, well, we don't know yet. We know I'm going to build one. Um, there's not a lot of people that can build eight to ten units at a time. Yeah, we you know haven't what I mean? seen it yet. No, we haven't seen it. You know, yeah. it happens in Boston, and that's the middle space, and that's what you need. Yeah, we need more of that here. Right. You know, you know what I mean? More density. Here. Right. And so, you know, and it's and what happens there is that it gets the, you know, the risk level goes up a bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because all of a sudden you, now you're doing a project instead of a project costing me five hundred grand, six hundred grand. It's cost me three to four million, yeah. right? Now, the other side of that is cool, you know, because what is still happening here is that I wouldn't have to sell these. I could still rent them and they'd cash flow in a, in a month away because the rents are so high. So what does happen is that the rent structure itself is helping it out because it's, it's hard to f me to figure out, <laughs> you know, how can someone give you a $15,000 deposit and why don't they buy a house, right? <laughs> now, but that's what happens, folks, okay? And that's at 5000 a month for like 1900 feet. Yeah, you know? yeah I think these, these rents are going to, they're, they're so high right now. They so. should get soft. Yeah, because uh, then, you know, where our investment probably is worth. A lot. Yeah. No, that's what it seems like. Stay right there, folks. Best and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials uh, flat, uh, down 12, actually. Nasdaq's. 
up 13. S&P is a flat. We'll come right back. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow uh, down six. NASDAQ is uh, up 15. S&Ps are uh, flat. Let's go take a look at the SPY once again. It doesn't change the context, folks. When we are talking about the front um, end of this, that you didn't want, if you're a bull, you didn't want this to go out to that swing point. And it's not going to when you're going to have the volume. So you've done 59 million so far. We did 64 yesterday. The swing on the SPY is 86. I suspect Monday, Tuesday, you're going to go after it. And the lead dog is still the Qs. So what you have with the Qs out here is that the Qs, bottom line, you're up six, six, 63 cents. Um, yesterday, we did... 56 million or at 53 and the swing point here is only 54. So I suspect what we're going to see is this the Qs want to try to get up into this uh, 314, which, you know, it'd be pretty easy to do. Now, what you have to remember next week is that let me just see what date this is. The C the CPI comes out and the real question is CPI. Yeah, I'm not sure what day it is. I think it's I think it comes out Thursday. Good. Because <laughs> that's the one you got to watch, folks. As Tommy was talking about this morning, if you come out with a print of a 9% CPI, that is that is saying that inflation is still raging at 9%. Okay? Nice. <laughs> the Fed, you know, the, the most, to me, the most important thing that the Fed said in the Fed minutes this week, folks, was that Powell said that 
they are not going to stop until inflation is down to 2%. Wow. I can't even imagine 2%. Can you? Yeah. yeah that's that's I, crazy. I, I, I literally can't even imagine it. What do know? you think the interest rates are going to be at if for that to happen? I think the Fed fund rate would probably be at 5%, would be at almost 9 and 9.5 or 10% on mortgage rates. Yeah. And I think that's real. Yeah. You know, or they decide to give it up, give up the ghost and say, okay, we're going to make a break. But if they make a break, then you're going to see the inflation really kick in. Yeah. I, they're, they're, listen, man. Yeah. Sounds like, like Yugoslavia back in the day. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously. I love it. I love it. I was, uh, uh, I was talking to a friend. He was saying, you know, you leave the house with a thousand dinar. Yeah. By the time you come back, you know, it's only worth like five, five months. Wow. Just... And folks, thanks, Peter. At the CPI is on Wednesday. Folks, have a great weekend, safe weekend. Come back and visit Tommy Monday morning, 9 o'clock. Great show. Yeah, look at him, folks.